Hey, welcome to Family Church. We are a diverse, spirit-filled, life-giving church, healing hurts, building relationships, and developing leaders. My name is Pastor John Mark. I'm so excited that you've connected to our page today. Be sure to grab a notebook, a pen, a paper, your phone, however you want to take notes and get ready for today's message. Let me ask this question today. Has anybody ever sold movie tickets for AMC theaters? Has anybody ever sold a refrigerator to a family member or friends? Has anybody ever sold a car, not as a dealer, working at a dealership, but have you ever sold a car without actually selling the physical car? Like you sold a car at a dealership, but it wasn't your car. Well, you, you might have, right? If you bought a car, you took somebody for a drive, and you're like, yo, you got to get one of these cars. Then they went and they bought the same car, but a different color, because they bought the same color, than they're a poser. You're upset, right? You're upset to buy the same exact car, but they can buy a car, just different color, right? Has anybody ever done that? You sold a movie ticket for AMC Theater, but you weren't compensated for it? Well, yeah, you have. You have. Every time you go watch a movie and you tell somebody that they have to go see that movie and they go see it, you sold a movie ticket for the theater, but you weren't compensated. You bought that brand new LG fridge. It's got a camera inside so that from your phone, you can tell how many eggs you got left. You can touch a button on the front of the fridge and where the window is, it's now a TV screen. And you can see everything that's inside. It's too much work to open the door to look in. But you can punch a six-digit code on the, <laughs> on the outside. And you told everybody, you got to get this fridge. It's on sale at Home Depot this weekend. And then went out and bought it. You sold a fridge for Home Depot. But you didn't get compensated for. We've all done this. We've all sold a product that we loved by telling people about it. They went and bought it, but yet we weren't compensated for it. Check this out. In Matthew 25, 35, Jesus is speaking to his disciples and he says this, for when I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you? Martha feeds you all the time. When were you thirsty and we gave you something to drink? When did we see a, you as a stranger and invited you in? When did you need clothes and we clothed you? When were you sick or in prison and we visited you? And the king replied, the Lord of hosts, Jesus Christ, truly I tell you, whatever you did for the least of your brothers and sisters, you did it for me. Whatever you did for others, whatever you did unto others, you did unto me. And you know, that's always like a good, like uplifting thing when we think that we did something good for people. But it also works in reverse when we did bad things to people when we cut people off on the highway and it is our fault and we still get angry at them for cutting them off. That, uh, we have prayer right after church if you need prayer. <laughs> we do these things. We, we, we talk to people, we sell things to people, we encourage people all the time. Technology companies are now Stealing a term from the Bible. They're stealing a term from the Bible for what they're calling their technology people who are in charge of soliciting sales. They're calling them technology evangelists. Technology evangelists. It's a new term. It's something new that's coming out. Wikipedia defines a technology evangelist as a person who builds a critical mass of support for a given technology 
and then establishes it as a technical standard in a market that is subject to network effects. All right, so do you understand what this is saying? A person who builds support, forget critical mass because we really don't understand that. Someone who builds support for a product and then establishes as the standard, okay? So let's talk about this for a second. There's this company named Apple. Apple made computers, but Apple wanted to make phones. Does anybody in here remember what life was like before a smartphone? <laughs> Do you remember being at your kid's game and having to take a bag out about this big and pull out something called a camcorder <laughs> and just pray to God that you charge the batteries? <laughs> take out cassettes and put them in, have to rewind it, make sure you didn't record over the birth of your child. But you didn't really know what was on that tape because it was a mystery tape. It was always a mystery what was on those tapes. And then you had it out there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, remember these things? Who does that anymore? <laughs> this computer company that says, we want to create phones, but we want to create something more than phones. We want to create the standard of phones. Now, we don't carry cameras around anymore. We don't carry still cameras or video cameras. We don't care. Oh, my God. Who remembers carrying around binders of plastic sheets with all your CDs in it? <laughs> e, to, bo, bo. And if you wanted to switch cars, yo, my binder. Grab your binder. You get in your other car, and if you were real high class bougie, you had a five disc changer. You were high class bougie if you could put five in one unit. You were low class bougie if you had to pull over, go in your trunk, and switch out your five disc. Who does that anymore? Unless you're driving a hoopty which a lot of commuter cars, we still got some hoopties to drive this city and back. I get it. But nobody wants a car today that doesn't have Bluetooth. Because not only do I have my phone in my pocket, I've got my camera in my pocket, I've got my video camera in my pocket, I've got my CDs in my pocket, and if you're over 40, you still call everything CDs. <laughs> if you're over 60, you call it a cassette. If you're over 70, you call it an eight track. <laughs> no, we're not talking about nannies. <laughs> everything's on this phone. Ev everything's on this phone. Your memories are on this phone. Right? Now you gotta get a bigger, bigger phone every time you upgrade. Like a 16 gig phone was amazing. Now it's like 128 gigs, 256 gigs, 512 gigs on our cell phone. Well, I need more because I need my memories accessible all the time. What am I saying is that a company, a computer company says, we want to get into the phone industry, but we want to set the standard. Nobody buys a cell phone today that doesn't have a camera. Nobody buys a cell phone today that can't play music. Nobody buys a cell phone today that doesn't have Bluetooth. So you don't even have to take the phone out of your pocket to answer it. Bloop. Hello? Then it's all sorts of confusing because you don't know if people are talking to you or not. <laughs> they set the standard for technology. They're called evangelists. And do you know that that's what Christians are supposed to have? Christians are supposed to have evangelists that go out and they talk about how great their product of faith is. How amazing their product of faith is. How full of joy they are with this product of faith called Christianity that they have. But you know the truth of the matter is there are less people evangelizing in the United States than ever before. There are actually more missionaries, 
from Africa and Europe coming to the U.S. to evangelize America than there is Americans going on mission trips to the uttermost parts of the earth. We have almost become a third world country of faith. Woo! I don't know anybody who wants to text that one out to all their friends. We are to be so sold out to our product of faith that we are constantly building support and making it the standard of all faith. We once were. Christianity once was the standard of faith. So much that we had printed it on our, our, our money. In God we trust. And really, it should. If we want to be all fair about America, not just talking about Christians, but America, it should really be in God's we trust. That would be a more American truth than the American truth in God we trust. Because America in general is not believing in Jehovah God, Elohim God. It's not. It's not. And we could sit back in our Christian bubble and think, yeah, but Christianity is still the strongest. It's not. It was, but it's not. Let's just think about it for a second. Listen, and, and, and my job is to not shame. I'm not shaming. I'm not judging. This is not a downer. You should not feel convicted by what I'm saying. You should be inspired. But let's just say that you're sitting here today and you're like, no, Christianity is still the number one truth and the number one gospel and the number one way. When's the last time you personally led somebody to the Lord? Enough said. Enough said. This isn't my job. It's not my job to evangelize the whole world. I can't do that. I can't do that. It's all, when's the last time a family barbecue turned from something other than screaming at each other about politics and vaccines to a conversation of faith? We are all called to evangelize. Check this out in Acts 13, verse 46. Then Paul and Barnabas answered them boldly. We, uh, we had to speak the word of God to you first. Yo, this is so messed up, right? He's saying, yo, we had to come and preach to our own people first. We had to. We were forced to give you the opportunity, our own people. Since you reject it, though... And do not consider yourselves worthy of eternal life. We're now going to the world. This could be a little bit of accusatory of the Christian world right now. We have the greatest faith. And we do the least with it. I'm actually very envious of the Mormons and the Jehovah Witnesses. I'm envious that they are so sold out to their lie, but they'll go knock on your door. I ain't answering the door, but they're gonna knock on it. Come on, like they're putting action to what they believe their truth is. We're banking eternity on a faith that we do nothing with. We're banking eternity, we're banking that we're going to heaven, but we don't talk about it. I'm going to spend an eternity with Jesus. But we don't know John 3.16. Come on, this is not accusatory. This is inspiring. Like, where am I? Where am I in my faith journey? How important is this? Am I actually an evangelist? Am I building support for the kingdom of God? Am I building support that Christianity should be the standard of faith? Because I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you this, in the next 10 to 25 years, the next 10 to 25 years, our government will decide Amen. what religion we should all be. We got to wake up. I told Saturday, I told yesterday's prayer meeting that my new statement of when I pray, you ever heard someone say, pay attention? Yeah. My new statement is, pray attention. <laughs> pray attention. Pray attention to what's happening around you guys right now. Pray attention to what 
decisions are being made right now. I'm telling you, next 10 to 25 years, it's going to come out. The church of America is. Because Christians aren't doing anything with their faith anyway. Somebody's getting revved up. Somebody's feeling that urgency in their spirit. Somebody's feeling that energy welling up inside us because you're an evangelist. You're an evangelist. It's what God made you to be, to live your faith out loud. Listen, that's not to be a weirdo. You're never going to catch your boy on a street corner saying, repent. Turn from your sin. You're going to hell. You're never going to hear me say that. You're never going to hear that. You know what I'm going to say? Yo, you want to hang out? You want to hang out? You want to chill? Let's go do something. Let's go for a hike. Let's go on a men's trip. Let's do a men's event. Let's play some basketball. You know what I'm never going to do? I'm never actually going to try to proselytize. But what will happen? Yo, Mike. You got an 18-year-old, a 16-year-old, and an 8-year-old. When your kids hit this age, how did you navigate these waters? Conversation opens up. They didn't even ask me about my faith yet. But I'm going to give them information about how I kept calm and how I didn't let crazy out the box and beat my kids. Because sometimes when I'm, mm, looking at her like that. Right? How'd I keep crazy in the box? And, and, and somewhere I might say, you know what? I take some time every single day to meditate and pray. Really? What does that look like? Are you sitting there with your legs crossed? No. I'm not even doing yoga poses. But I'm going to go find, like, I have a place that I go. I like to be outside. I'm going to go somewhere. I'm going to be alone. And first, I'm just going to think. I'm going to let my mind relax. And then I'm going to pray to my higher power. Listen, I'm using, I'm using world conversation. I'm going to pray to my higher power. And I'm going to invite him in to, to help me in my life. Really, you have a higher power? What, what does that look like? What, what do you believe in? All of a sudden, I find myself in an evangelistic moment, talking about my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But I didn't start there. I didn't start there. No one wants to hear about Jesus. They want to hear about you. Why are you this way? Why are you happy when everyone's freaking out? How can you be so calm? Oh, well, that's easy. And then you begin this conversation. It's going to lead to Jesus. He's going to be lifted up, and he's going to draw all men unto him. He's going to build his church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. But how we navigate those conversations will determine whether you're weird or not. Right? Because it can get weird. It can get weird. So, watch this. We had to talk to you first, but since you rejected it, we had to go to the world. We had to go to the Gentiles, for this is what the Lord has commanded us. I have made you a light for the Gentiles. I just want to ask you this today. Again, not accusatory, but how bright is your Christian light? Are you a 10-watt bulb? A 60-watt bulb? A 100-watt bulb? Are you an LED light? Come on. You know when someone got them bright headlights and you think they got their brights on, you flash them, and then bam, they hit you with the high beam. <laughs> what kind of light are you for the gospel? Light is important to God. His first command of all creation was let there be light. And guess who the light is? You are the light. We were to be the light to the Gentiles, to bring salvation to the ends of the earth. When the Gentiles heard this, when the world heard this, they were glad and honored. Man, we're so afraid that we're going to share our faith and someone's going to be pissed off at us. 
We're so scared. Wonder if they reject me. Well, one, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting the gospel. Two, they're not going to be mad at you. They're going to welcome you. Thank you so much for trusting me with your faith. It's when you want to come at people with judgment that they're going to reject it. When you come at people to change them, oh, I'm going to change you. Oh, I'm going to help you. Oh, leave me alone with that. You want to help me cook me a meal? You want to help me be my friend? Dude, there's nothing worse. There's nothing worse than someone calling you up saying, hey, yo, can I take you out to lunch? Yeah, man, let's go to lunch. And you're sitting there eating, and you're about three quarters of the way done with the meal. All right, Mike, so the reason why I asked you out to lunch today, I got this multi-level marketing company. I'm telling you right now, dude, I'm going to reach in my pocket. I'm going to pull out a bill. I'm going to put it on the table, and I'm going to walk out. I thought you wanted to be with me. I thought you wanted to hang out with me. I didn't realize that I was a sales pitch. You, we don't leave the sales pitch. We don't leave with the sales pitch of Jesus. We lead with us. I want to spend time with you. I want to hang out. I want to hang out. Time, 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 time. Watch this. And the word of the Lord spread to the whole region. The word of the Lord spread to the whole region because the people who were lights let their light shine and then their approach was, we're here to help. We love you. And they were glad and received it with joy. I love it. I love it. But there's an urgency. There's an urgency about sharing our faith. There's an urgency in sharing our faith. And I'm gonna tell you why. It's because we are the light of the world we have a mission in which we were created for, but there's also an enemy trying to stop it. We have to understand that, guys. We have to understand that we wrestle not against principalities and powers. We wrestle not against, uh, uh, we wrestle not against governments and government policies. We wrestle against principalities and powers and rulers of the dark age. Watch this. The reason why a lot of times you try to talk to someone about your faith but it's rejected, 2 Corinthians 4, 4. The God of this age, Satan, the devil, Lucifer, whatever you want to call him, has blinded the minds of the unbelievers so that they cannot see the light, there it is again, of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness. I love that. Let your light shine out of darkness. I am not a huge fan. Oh, am I gonna go here? You didn't think my joke was funny last week. I'm not a big fan of homeschooling out of fear. If you believe that you can give your child a better education and better opportunities and better exposure to music programs and sports by homeschooling, I support you 100%. But many people homeschool out of fear that the world is going to corrupt their child. And if that's the truth, then you're already not doing your job. Insulation has never been a cure for protection. Isolation. Insulation. No, it's giving your kids a strong spirit. That will sustain them bodily. Yes. Training up a child in the way they should go so when they're old they'll not depart from it. We were never called to take the light out of darkness. Yes. We are, however, called to equip the light, to maintain its light 
while in the midst of darkness. It's hard. I put my kids in school, in, in a Christian school for one year. I almost got in a fist fight with the principal. I can't, put, I can't keep my kids here, man. I'm about, to, I'm about to beat, listen, I'm about to beat you down, sir. In the name of Jesus, I'm about to beat you down. It was the ugliest, angriest, hate-filled school in the name of Jesus. I ain't saying no names. I didn't like, like, my kids weren't called to take the light out of darkness. You are not called to take the light out of darkness. But he made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of Christ. Listen, nobody goes around during Christmas time looking at light bulbs. You don't drive through neighborhoods of houses decorated to look at light bulbs. Oh my God, look, that's a round bulb. Those are pointy light bulbs. We go around looking at what shines from within the light bulb. We, oh, we're so mesmerized by the lights. And if somebody goes all out, where they match music and lights, ding, da, da, ding, ding, da, da, ding, ding, da, da, ding, ding, da, da, ding, da, da, ding. We're mesmerized. I like that. The wonder and amazement at looking. I, I watch some people who haven't been in church before, and and the lights come on and our band starts jumping around, and I see people sometimes like in service they've never seen anything like that. Don't know what to look at. But they're into the light. And I'm not talking about the LED lights. I'm talking about the light that should, how can you be happy in church? I mean, I'm used to pull out your hymnals and turn to page 75. Oh, Father, we you. Man, church was so good today. So good. wasn't good. It was the same sermon you've been hearing for 25 years. No, we're drawn to the light. Even bugs are drawn to light. You got one of them bug zappers outside your house if you got mosquitoes? I love that thing. I do. I love it, man. Sitting outside, I was like, zick, zap. Yeah. Got another one. And if it's like a big bug, it's like that. But they can't help themselves. They're drawn to that light. They're mesmerized by the light. And all of a sudden, they see the eternal light, right? Wow. <laughs> Got them. The light. You're the light. You're that light. People should be drawn to the life of Christ. That's in you. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives and dwells on the inside of you. You should be alive. You should be happy. You should be full of joy. You should be prosperous and successful, determined and motivated. People just follow you. I don't know why I'm following him. I don't know why I'm following this person, but... <laughs> I'm sorry. Today, on every single one of your seats, I gave you a tool, a tool that I like to use. Um, I've actually even had to like change a little bit of my life because I realized that I didn't really have a whole lot of exposure to unchurched people. So I have a few things in my life now where I'm out in the public more often, but for several years, like everybody I knew went to church, so it was like I didn't really have any name to put on here. But it's a simple, simple tool to evangelize. And it's three steps. Right on the front, it says pick, pray, invite. Pick, pray, invite. Pick four people. Now, we're just giving you a number of four people. That could quadruple the kingdom of God so fast. This could get, gain so much support and become such a standard in the world today if we all did four. But you can start with one. If you have one friend that you want to target, that you know, like, 
this friend needs Jesus. This friend needs a relationship with God. Pick one person. Pray for them. Now, what does that first look like? Let me tell you what prayer for someone who you put on this card looks like. Lord, bless Johnny. Bless him. Everything he sits his hands to. Let it prosper and be successful. Lord, I pray that Johnny is protected and safe. That no COVID or sickness or disease can come by his house. Pray for his family. He has a great marriage. He has raised his kids. Why? Because I love Johnny. And I'm praying for Johnny. But then my prayer is going to turn as I'm praying for Johnny. Lord, give me an opportunity to speak to Johnny about the gospel. Open a door of opportunity that Johnny and I can have a heart-to-heart. Because God, I don't want to spend eternity without Johnny. I need Johnny in heaven with me. And Lord, if I don't have an opportunity, would you send a laborer? Would you send a neighbor? Would you send someone else that could bring him to that place? And the third step, invite. Invite. Now here's the deal. If you pray for opportunity, then when opportunity comes, you have to take it. Okay? You're hanging out with Johnny. And you're not proselytizing. You're not not trying to convert Johnny. You're just praying for Johnny. And Johnny's over your house at a barbecue. And he's hanging out real late. Got the bonfire going in the back. And it's you and Johnny just sitting there. And whether you're having seltzer, Pepsi, or beer, I don't care. You're sitting there with Johnny. No one else is around. Johnny's at Mike. Things aren't good at home. Things are a wreck, dude. I don't know if this time next year I'm going to be married. I need help, man. All right, Johnny, let's talk. What's going on with you? What's going on with you that your wife doesn't want to be married to you? What's going on with you? Well, she, no, no, no. What's going on with you? Well, if she would just, no, no, what's going on with you? What's going on now? What are you feeling? What are you experiencing? Look, listen, I'm just being a friend. This isn't a Jesus thing yet. It's a Jesus moment, but it's not a Jesus thing yet. Bam, we had this conversation. Yo, Johnny, could I take a second right now and just pray for you? Pray for your marriage? Pray for your wife. Pray for you. Bam, pray. How'd that feel, man? Is that okay? Yeah. Hey, John, let me ask you a question. Would you ever consider going to church on a Sunday morning with me? Real laid back church. Loves family. Would you come? If I picked you up? See how easy that just transitioned? Now, the, that, the invite is important. The invite is important. Now, the invite's not all about church. If you get someone to a place where you are confident that you can lead them through this prayer that's on the back of the card, then you go ahead and take that moment and invite them into the kingdom right then. Hey, man, the reason why I can keep my head and be calm and be in a good mood when the world looks like it's going wild Honestly, it's because of my faith. Well, what kind of faith is that? Bam, opened up this conversation. Hey, Johnny, would you like to experience this today too? Just like that prayer we just prayed, we can pray another kind of prayer. We can, we can pray a prayer that changes our spirit. It changes who we are inside. It brings us alive. Would you wanna pray that one? Well, Pastor Mike, here's the problem, man. Here's the problem. It's like, I don't know the Bible like you know the Bible. You didn't know the refrigerator that you sold to other people. You didn't know every car feature that you sold to people. You didn't remember every detail about the movie that you sold to your friends. You don't got to know everything. You just need to know what it means to you. What? Does your salvation mean to you? What does the gospel mean to you? Why, when you could have slept in this morning, 
Did you get yourself out of bed to get to church? What's that story? That's all you need to know. That's all you need to know. You know, maybe you're, maybe you're here today because a friend drug you out of bed to come to church. Great. Great, but it's not by accident that you're here today. It's not by accident you're here today. You're here today to experience church in a way that's not the normal kind of church. A church that's going to continue to challenge you in your faith and can challenge you as to why you believe what you believe. Come on, somebody. It's never been a matter of a lack of knowledge. Evangelism has actually been a lack of boldness. A lack of urgency. A lack of intention. Pick, pray, invite. First Corinthians 3, 4, I'm ending in this. There's a group of people that are arguing, do you follow Paul or do you follow Apollos? Are you part of Paul's posse or Apollos' crew? For when one says, I follow Paul, and the other one says, I follow Apollos, are they not just mere human beings? Well, I go to family church. Well, I go to this church. I go to this church. Who cares where you go? All human beings. What after all is Apollos? What about Paul? Only servants through whom you came to believe as the Lord has assigned each of you. I planted the seed, Apollos watered the seed, but God has to make it grow. Listen, we're not trying to convert people day one. We're just planting and watering, planting and watering. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. But watch this, the one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose, and they will each be rewarded according to their own labors. Yo, you sold a movie ticket, got no commission. You sold a refrigerator, got no compensation. You sold a car for a dealership, didn't get paid for it. But the Bible says that when you share your faith and someone comes to the knowledge, he says that there's a reward. There's an eternal reward that comes along with your labors and your consistency to share that faith. I'm telling you right now, man, I want to store treasure in heaven, bro. I'm very business-minded. I'm an investor. I've got a lot of investments in my portfolio. But the, my biggest one, man, is what I store in heaven. What I store in heaven, man, that's my biggest bag, if you know what I'm talking about. That's the big bag. What are you storing in heaven? Father, we thank you today that your word will never return void, but we would be motivated, inspired to fulfill the call of evangelists in our lives, that we don't need to know all the features of Christianity. We just need to know why we drive it. Why do we drive Christianity? Help us to be the evangelist that you called us to be. Help us to be a light in dark times. Help us to reach our neighbors, to reach our family in a way that's life-giving, that's peaceful, that inspires them to talk about you. Lord, I pray today as we leave here that we are protected and safe. If you're here today and you've never had an opportunity to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, I want to offer that to you right now. We pray that simple prayer, that exact prayer that's on the back of this card. And if you're here today and you know that today's your day, that you need to make that shift, that adjustment, we wanna pray this with you. And we love you so much that we all wanna pray it out loud together. It says, Dear God, I come to you just like I am. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I invite you into my life to change me and to make me new. Thank you for accepting me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
If you're watching online and you prayed that prayer for the very first time, would you type amen in one of our chat rooms? One of our online hosts would love to connect with you and send you our six-day devotional called Starting Point. If you're in the room today and you prayed that prayer for the very first time, would you allow me the honor to celebrate you for two seconds? I'm just gonna clap for you and scream, I see you. Uh, if you prayed that prayer for the very first time today, would you just wave at me and say, hey, that's me. I prayed that today for the very first time. Anybody at all real quick? Yeah, I see you, yeah. Anybody else real quick? Yeah. All right, yeah, I see you. Awesome. Amen. We have ushers uh, who have that same six-day devotional. We also have it available at the Welcome Center. If you need prayer for any reason, we will have care team members at the front and in the lobby. If, if you're going through something in life and you need something more than prayer, you need counseling, we have a counseling department here at the church. We make ourselves available to you. Uh, we understand in the climate of today that sometimes we just need some spiritual counsel beyond what just praying is going to do in our lives. Um, some great tools that our counselors have. Uh, we also have a daycare that is up and running here at Family Church. A fully licensed daycare happens Monday through Fridays. If you need child care for your children of any age, uh, check it out. You can get information um, down in the fam kids. Father, we thank you today that your word will never return void, but it will accomplish exactly what you set it forth to do. We thank you, Lord, for lives transformed today at the preaching of your word. I thank you, Lord, that we are blessed. We're blessed coming in. We'll be blessed going out. Everything we set our hands to would prosper and be successful in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching today's message. My name is Ashley, and if this message has made an impact in your life in any way, I'd like to ask you to do a couple of things. First, we want you to like and subscribe to our channel and join us right here every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. The next thing I'm gonna ask you to do is take a next step on your journey, and we would love to help you do that. You can head on over to familychurchny.com or email us at team at to get started today.